Hello everyone and welcome back to my Ultimate JNSQ series in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. Prior to starting to record, I tried to delete USI on the hope that maybe that would fix some of our communication problems or maybe the re-entry heating problem or something. Uh, so I removed it and started the uh, save up, but then I got a contract configurator error. Now, I made sure, even though I deleted the mod, to keep one part in. And that was a derp ring that we had already used in craft so that it wouldn't cause any problems. So no craft were deleted. I made sure there wasn't an issue there. But then contract configurator threw up an error. And I don't know why, but it was related to the evacuation of a station contract that we had picked up in the previous video. Uh, right? We have a evacuate moon station thing. And that wasn't even a thing that had a USI part on it, as far as I know. But, well, we had an error. And so, uh, fortunately, I zipped up the save and I just put back the USI stuff. And we'll just deal with it for now. So, I restored the save so that we wouldn't have an error and the contract is still here. And we will proceed as we were doing before. And I'll figure out some way to get rid of us i mean I, I don't really want to get rid of usi i want the parts and such uh i might be willing to do without all the additional uh kerbal uh jobs maybe that was a problem right we've got the farmers biologists scientists and all that business i thought there was a whole dialogue for hiring them that came with uh usi maybe I don't know. Maybe it's not working properly in the first place. But anyway, we have all those jobs that I don't really need. But I do want the parts, so it's complicated. But for now, we will just proceed and I'll think about it a little bit further considering this mishap. It's not a guarantee that USI is causing the problem in the first place. So there is that. Okay, so what it says is fully evacuate moon station and perform what? Perform an emergency landing on moon? Oh, I didn't see that part. Okay, I oh. I I I was too hasty on the leave no kerbals on board the moon station. I didn't realize that we had to land them on the moon. I would like to, you know, leave them on Kerbin at the end, would be great. We have to land on the moon. Okay, well, I guess we have to land on the moon. Back to the VAB, and we need a lander sent over here. ASAP. Alright, I've decided that we're going to take this opportunity to test a few things. We have our moon lander in here. It's just uh, one of these Vinci command pods with two people. We already have one around the moon. It's just not a lander. And it's just liquid fuel and oxidizer spark engine and two backup ant engines. Landing legs, we really got mop propellant in the pod and RCS thrusters, solar panels, and the control core is the usual, usual one we have been using. And of course, docking port. No additional science for now. Uh, that alone gives it two, nearly 2,800 meters per second. Actually, probably more than that if we just used a spark engine. Let's put that on there. Well, 2,800 exactly. So that will be our lander. That should be enough to land on the moon and get back up. And what we are testing is if I can prevent boil off with cryogenic fuel. So we are using cryogenic engines for our upper stage and intend to use them to capture around the moon. Uh, so we have three of these eyesore engines and I'm gonna have the center one be high quality I think. Uh, the other two can be lower quality and we are going to, uh, the burn time doesn't require them to be high quality but just in case. And I've got radiators and I've got this special tank. This special tank has an insulation effectiveness of 70%. I don't know what that means exactly when it comes to how quickly it's going to boil off, but we'll see. And there's also this CUSS fuel tank, which is heavier, but its insulation effectiveness is only 50%. So I figure this, and it's thinner, it's uh, 1.5 meters instead of 1.875 meters. So I decided that this would be a better tank. 
Now here it says there's an insulation int which is negative 100%, I don't like that, but the shell is 70% as it said there. So hopefully the shell is the important part, but I don't know why they're giving me the int then. Uh, I assume that means interior, but what does that mean? Anyway, so that's a concern. Uh, this tank also has hydrogen and oxidizer, uh, but if the tank itself can't handle it, maybe the radiators can help. I probably should only test one thing at a time, but I decided to go for both. In a pinch, the lander can capture itself around the moon and then dock to the station, pick up what fuel it needs and journey down to the surface. So it's not going to cripple the mission if we can't prevent boil off on this stage. So it's going to be okay, but yeah, we will try it out. Otherwise, a very similar setup to what we've been using, slightly different perhaps. Uh, liquid fuel and oxidizer all the way, except at the bottom. The usual tanks that we've been using, the shell is only 20% effective, it says. But anyway, Bobcat engines at the bottom, and then two boosters. So we are going to try this out and see if this works. We've got little antennae on the lander. They're down here. So just these biconical horn antennae. And that is all I think we need, except we should probably rotate this like that for the booster's sake. All right, and we're gonna rearrange this. Okay, let's try it out. Oh, let's make sure no Kerbals snuck in, and then let's try it out. Well, we already seem to have boil off, but we haven't extended the radiators yet, so uh, maybe even though it's a nighttime launch, we'll just go because we want to make sure we don't have any more boil off, boil off. The clamps don't seem to be doing anything about that, so I'm sort of used to the realism overhaul system where the clamps would replenish it. But we have comms, so ignition. And throttle. Okay, that throttle isn't working. And go. We had to underfuel the boosters to stay under the 140 ton limit on the pad. Okay, booster set. Now this launch system can carry much more than what we are carrying right now. Okay, last part of the burn. I'm gonna let it deorbit. It has plenty of fuel left, but we're not gonna use it for our purposes here. Okay, so separation and ignition of these three. I opted for three just so that I had a center node basically, but it also cut down on burn times so that I didn't have to have high quality on every single one of them. Okay, we are in orbit. Let's see. Right now we've got a loss of 0.01 per second. Extend radiator. I should have separated the fairings first, but if they go. I don't know if the radiators are doing anything. We'll see at the end. Maybe they don't have any effectiveness on the boil off situation at all. Okay. I mean, that would be a thing in realism overhaul, but not necessarily here. We didn't have a time limit on the evacuation, did we? I don't know. Hopefully they're not that mean. We'll do a mid-course correction to fix it beyond this. We better just go now. We have plenty of Delta V. So some boil off is acceptable. The question is whether we can mitigate some of it. Okay, it's sort of wandering away, so I'll replot as a mid-course adjustment. Okay, that looks close enough. 14 hours. Well, now it's 0, .00. Once we time warp, we'll get a better read on that. I want to have my rear to the sun. I mean, actually, it doesn't matter right now because we don't have any Kerbals on board, but it'll probably help the solar panels anyway. So while we time warp 0.19 right now, 
I mean, it's not bad. It certainly hurts a bit, though. Delta V is going down. Question is whether we'll have enough left to capture once we get there. But again, not critical. Just a test. But we're certainly not controlling the boil off entirely. Now, our rear end was to the sun, so it wasn't like we were broadside to the sun. As far as orientations go, this is as good as that situation gets. Okay, starting to burn. All right. Okay, we have a burn with a potential encounter there. Once we get there, that's in three days. I'll put it rear end to the sun again. I don't know if it'd prefer it the other way around, but if we had crew, this would be the way to go. So we might as well test that. I don't know if we're going to have any Delta V left after three days, though. Now, this was a long trip to the moon. We could have done this faster. So on entering Moon or SOI, we have 133 left. We're only carrying two days of food, water, and oxygen since we're going to land them and then bring them right back into orbit. I don't expect them to hang out. Okay, well, 131 is all we ended up with. So, with the special tank and with the radiators, it's still not worthwhile carrying it all the way over here for a cryogenic burn. Transfer burn, fine, but trying to use it after a while is not feasible yet. Okay, well... Let's take what we can get out of it. I'm not sure I wanted it to capture into orbit around the moon, but that is what's happened. I mean, the tank. Alright, and off. We have more Delta V than I thought we were going to have. And I don't know why. We were supposed to only have... We were supposed to have less than this. Uh, I thought it was 2,800. That makes me worried. Have we used something that we shouldn't have been using? I don't know. I don't... Well, we used a little bit of mod propellant, I suppose. Okay. Ignition. This is just a regular quality spark. Maybe I should have made it a high quality one. Okay. Proceeding. Ignition to approach the target. It'd be nice to be able to reuse this lander, but we'll probably have to slap a new engine on. This one won't be reliable for very long. Okay, magnetism. Oh, well, there's a lot of magnetism right there. Okay, um... Hmm? Huh? Okay, well, now we're docked. Okay, so let's transfer some peoples. We might as well top off our fuel. Well, we don't have that much on the station, actually. Uh, it's probably not super important to do that. This side might need more. Well, I'll leave it be. Oh, but... Well, if we end up bringing up extra, it's okay. I'll, I'll top it off. Okay, so now we've done that. Alright, well, let us undock. Okay, we fully evacuated, now we have to perform an emergency landing. Now it says complete any one of the following. Vessel state, vessel state. I don't know what those vessel states are, so that's a little bit worrisome. But anyway, we probably want to land on the daylight side, so we can retro burn now. And this is the periapsis side anyway, so it's beneficial to do it now too. Okay. 
Okay, well, that's a good start. Maybe a little bit more. Okay, head down. I don't know why you would want to evacuate to the surface of the moon at all. Seems like a bad idea, but hey, that's what they're paying for. Do not question the customer. I don't know what sort of terrain we're going to land at, though. feel like we should expedite the descent rather than wait for where we're ending up there. This crater coming up ahead looks pretty good. If we can make it. Given the burn time, a guy ignite the other two engines, too. Well, I don't want to throttle down. That just adds more burn time that we'd be using up on the engines, so... No big rocks, hopefully. Uh, some suspicious rocks there, but nothing too bad, I don't think. Oh, I'm taking an awful long time, though. <laughs> Oh. Okay, we are on the ground. Does it like it? Okay, it's satisfied that we evacuated from Moon Station. I suppose we should try to do something on the ground here. I don't have a contract or anything. Please don't tip anything. Or break anything. Okay, plant a flag. I should have checked the biome. Jib on the moon. Where are we? Good question. Uh, looks like we've already got the surface sample done here, wherever we are. Yeah. Uh, so we've been here before, whatever this is. Okay, now I didn't put a ladder, so we're going to need to use the pack to get up. Okay, that was successful. Yep, I can't use the crew report to check where we are either, because we've already done that. So, yeah. Um, telemetry... Oh, oh, I think I took the telemetry thing out. Okay, well, we can't do science. Uh, let me just check for contracts in the Space Center. It seems a shame, after all. But they probably all require us to launch a new vessel. Oh, uh, take the crew of Moon Lander 2 to Moon Station. Well, I don't mind if I do. Uh, the emergency seems to be over and the conditions down here don't look fantastic. No kidding. You better get them off the surface ASAP. Well, that is fine. I mean, it's a pitiful advance, but, you know, we didn't need to construct a new vessel anyway, and we were planning to do it, too. Okay, we'll take that. I guess we might as well not ask for too much as far as extra stuff. Science data from surface of the moon. It doesn't... I mean, it doesn't require a new vessel, but we don't really have the ability. I really should have put some more stuff on. We only have two contract slots left, so I'll just leave that be for now, even though probably we want to do the science data from Surface of Moon and Minmus. But, alright, let's get the crew back to the station. Was intending to do that anyway. I guess this was a very immediate sort of emergency. So you would still probably just keep them in orbit of the moon. You probably wouldn't land them. Okay, well, the station's directly overhead. Well, not directly. Well, it's overhead enough. But we should probably want it a little bit further ahead because we'll be in the lower orbit. Okay. All right, enough hopping. And... go. Uh, 
Oh, engine failed. It was one of the ant engines, too. That's not great. Oh, the main... They're supposed to outlast a spark. <laughs> I should have tilted the ant engines. Okay. Um, we have no remaining burn time <laughs> on that. We have some on the ant engine, but it's not balanced by the other ant engine. But I decided to shut down because I think at this point we could probably just use the mob propellant to do everything else. Um, well, 100 meters per second is tough, though. Okay, well, we've got an approach there, but to match speeds, we're going to need the spark engine to light again, probably. If it can. Well, I'm gonna try that now, and if necessary, we'll need to go to plan B. Which is actually... Oh, we don't have a engineer to move the parts, though. Plan B would have been to have an engineer move the part. <laughs> uh, move the ant engine. But, okay. Okay, the spark lit. Okay, that should be good enough. So I like this little lander, but we're going to need to fit new engines on it and add some more science to it. It's got the Delta V to carry the science down, so that's a positive. Okay, getting parallel. Or as parallel as possible. And then moving forward. Okay, and docked. Alright, well let's transfer them back to this side. And that terrier has plenty of time left on it. I guess we'll drain the fuel from this side into here and get... Oh, we can't. Ah, um, we were able to transfer fuel into there. Um, can we transfer fuel from there to here? Yes. So there's something blocking the way from here to here. I guess it's this bearing base. Oh well, so we can't transfer fuel like that. So, let's just transfer the crew. Well, it might not be the fairing base, it could be the decoupler prior to the fairing base. Okay, so next, uh, this took longer than I thought. We want to send a crew to Minmus Station next and potentially rescue Hillbull, though we might be leaving Hillbull well, we might be leaving Jeb at the Minma station and bring Hillbull and John Long back to Kerbin because we only get credit for recovering them and, uh, when we bring them back. And Jeb will be all alone on the Minma station potentially to do something else. So that's what I'm thinking about. And probably one of the things will be to uh, grab a lander, which we send over. we will send over, and get that green sandstone. So those are plans, but this took a little bit longer than I thought, especially with coming up with the design and deciding to use the cryogenic engine. I uh, changed my mind part way on the design because of that. Uh, so I'll tackle the Minmus portion of this in the next video. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.